Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I can't give you straight face. Hello, today I'm talking with my friend James. Um, we did undergrad together in physics. That was in New Zealand and now we're both PhD students together again. We wanted to talk about some physics degree horror stories because we have plenty of those. There are so many. Uh, I guess maybe as a deterrent for anyone who's too optimistic about studying physics. Um, we don't want to put you off, but here are some of the things that stand out to us as maybe the less great experiences studying phys studying physics. Okay, first of all, one that I think comes as a shared experience is the Math 240 course. That was a terrible course. So Math 240 was, um, half of it was real analysis and half of it was group theory. I actually liked the group theory half of the course, but the real analysis half was torture. I think the group theory saved us. If yeah, it yeah. hadn't been in there, we probably would have failed. Yeah, so um, it was my first experience with pure maths, really, and it was in second year, and I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Specifically, they advertise that course as for third years to take to do an extra second year course, because it is the most difficult second year math course. Yeah, so I think this became a horror story after the midterm test uh, which was given to us by the lecturer who was this real he was a really good mathematician but he was very strict. very he was the stereotypical old english scottish sort of scottish strict, oh, he's definitely scottish scottish strict mathematician very rigorous have to have all the proofs rigorous to yes that, that was something about about it um so he made the test multiple choice which i thought well, great how could you do bad on multiple choice test <laughs> except, what could go wrong <laughs> except every wrong answer lost you marks um and it was basically a guessing game because it was so i don't know it was so difficult so <laughs> so basically if you were to get 50 percent of the questions right and leave the rest of the test blank you would get a passing mark however if you got 50 percent of the questions right and 50% of the questions wrong, you would get a zero. So I came out of the exam with a glorious minus five. <laughs> and I somehow managed to scrape through with a four out of a hundred. Uh, yes, that's, that's percentage. So that was horrific for me. Um, and I was like, oh, this is not going well. Um, like I said, I think we saved ourselves with the group theory half, but I, the feelings after that and getting a negative score were not good. <laughs> no. It was something that really just crushes you inside. You can't maintain composure in a course like that when yeah. that happens. Yeah. Oh, we, we got through it in the end. Um, yeah. To give you an idea of what the questions were sort of like, there would basically be a mathematics spiel that would say, there is a limit such and such and such. Which one of these is the correct proof? Sort of like a miniature one-line proof. And then it would just be a long line of about 15 to 30 characters of pure mathematical notation. The only difference between the four answers would be like some signs would be flipped or a, instead of an A character here it would be the E character meaning everything instead of all. And it came to a point where you couldn't even read the answers so sometimes you were just like, well, maybe it's this one. Yeah. Alright, so one of our other horror stories, I think a shared one was... Steve. <laughs> Steve. The glorious guest lecturer. Yeah, so um, I, I think this was also the start of second year. And I think it was our first second year physics course, and it was like waves and optics or something. Yeah, I um, remember this one very well. <laughs> I think you remember it better than me. Um, I, I know it was waves and optics and that we had this guest lecturer. So it was our first week of second year, our first set of homework of second year on waves and optics one of the first physics courses. We had just come out of first year, which was considered a little bit harder than high school math, so we were expecting a jump to second year, but we weren't know how big this jump would be. Now, we had a guest lecturer from America called Steve, and apparently he didn't understand what level we were at. Maybe he didn't understand that we were second years, maybe he didn't know what level second years were supposed to be. So he gave us a sheet of homework. Um, a sheet of homework that took many hours and made no progress. With many tears. Um, I think I eventually just gave up on the homework and was like, 
eh, I it's kind of too hard. I'll just wait yeah. to see what the answers were. I think it was you persevered, maybe. <laughs> I persevered for a little bit, but just made no progress at all. The person who actually found the answer was our friend Jordan, who was a direct entry to second year. So he had never done university physics at all. This was his very first introduction to university homework, and he was absolutely terrorised by this. But somehow through, I think he said like five hours of frantic googling and learning how to do stuff, he managed to get the answer. Now the answer itself I can't exactly remember, but I know that it involved a transformation from normal Cartesian coordinates into polar coordinates, which to say a third year math student that doesn't sound that difficult. But when you're a new second year student who's never done a coordinate transformation inside an already difficult problem, it becomes almost impossible. Yeah, I think just we just didn't know what we were supposed to do. No. And I think the whole class sort of had this feeling we arrived the next day at the lecture and we're like, oh my god, what we're was that? We were all going to fail. Um, it eventually transpired, however, that Steve had given us a problem that was from a graduate level um, American grad school textbook. And so I think he was told, like, oh, you, you should not have given them a graduate level problem. Yeah, so when the original lecturer head of the course, John Paul Wells, came out and had a look at the problem, he immediately laughed and said, no, there's no way you're expected to do this. <laughs> yeah, he laughed at us. <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one more course I remember was... PDEs, partial differential equations. Um, for me, I think this was particularly traumatic. I think you did better in the end than I did, but um, it was just bad from start to finish because I remember I did a midterm test. There were two midterm tests. The first one I got 50% on. And I was like, oh my God, that's so bad. And I made it my goal to, for the second one, do a lot better and make up for that 50. And on the second one, I also got 50. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> So I actually walked out of that second midterm test, walked straight to the um, admin department for the uni, and I said, I'd like to withdraw from my course, please. <laughs> and they were like, oh, sorry, the last day to withdraw was yesterday. <laughs> and I was like, no. Um, but that it was okay in the end. I think scaling was the miracle that saved me. So I think everyone kind of did as bad as each other so all of us got lifted up in our grade and I actually came up with an okay grade in that course so it was fine in the end. Yep so my last story comes from ODEs which is Ordinary <laughs> Differential Equations the course previous to PDEs and in this one I got to one of the exam questions and I realized I have no idea how to answer this. This is something I knew a week ago but I've just suddenly forgotten. I have no idea how to come to the right answer. If I came to the right answer, I could give a good write-up for what I would, how I would actually do the process. I just don't remember the process. So, in my brilliant wisdom, what I decided to do was just verbal diarrhea and write down everything I knew about that question topic over about three pages, <laughs> listing, if this was the answer, here's what I would do, but if it was this case, I would do this instead. And if it were this case, then I would do this as well. And I just wrote down everything, and I have no idea what mark I got for that question I did not look at the test but same with that one I got a pretty good mark in that course due to the power of scaling due to everyone doing pretty bad the in power exam. of scaling I think that saved us a few times <laughs> a lot of times <laughs> yes yeah, so I think those those are some of our main horror stories um, there were good times as well um, but yeah studying physics can definitely be stressful at times there were lots of all-nighters as well and just yeah freaking out over handing in assignments. Assignments, exams, <laughs> tests. Yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> Labs even. Yeah. All right. Thanks, James. Yeah, thank you. No worries. And thanks for watching.